Santa, they call him Father Christmas. He's dressed in scarlet. He's supposed to be a king. So, again, this is just Satan trying to mimic Jesus Christ. It's Satan using this Santa Claus, make-believe Santa Claus figure. He's trying to use Santa to mimic God and some of the things you're going to see in this video. Um, I'm just going to point out what this book does. Revelation 1, verse 14. His head and his, his, head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, dot, dot, dot. It continues, but I think the pamphlet left off the rest. But there you have it. You know, God's hair, white like wool, white as snow. Santa has this fake Santa figure has white hair white beard again it's Satan he wants to be I read that in the beginning he wants to be like the most high I'll probably read that one again towards the end Also in Daniel chapter 7 verse 9, I beheld till the thrones were cast down. The Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. Dot, dot, dot. From this pamphlet, I, they have Isaiah chapter 63 verse 1 through 2. I'll read 2. Verse 2, Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel, and thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat? Revelation chapter 9, verse 11, And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. So there's the Bible, there's the truth. This fake Santa character dresses in red. And his feet, dot, 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 as if they burned in a furnace. So again, I'm just reading the verse from the pamphlet. There's more to that verse. But look how his feet burned in a furnace. Uh, this book, this pamphlet mentions how Santa Claus comes down from a chimney. Usually during Christmas, some homes have the fire going. Your feet would get burnt. Again, Revelation 1.15, they have it. Again, this is not the full verse, but and his feet dot dot as if they were burned in a furnace. So again, to make it clear, I think you're getting the point now. Santa Claus is fake. You know, it's make-believe. But Satan's using this to reach children. And the imagery of Santa Claus is trying to mimic the Bible. It's trying to mimic God. It's trying to mimic Jesus Christ. Probably read it one more time here where again remember in Isaiah where it talks about Lucifer and it says I will be like the most high well he's not going to be but again he, one more verse here if I can find it So I'm going to go into more of this. Some of this other stuff that it gets into. Some of you might have realized some of the stuff about Santa. I mean, but a lot of it I never even realized. Again, Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14. And no marvel for Satan. And no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. That's what you're kind of seeing with this Santa Claus figure because, you know, children think Santa Claus is just, even parents out there think Santa Claus, the idea of Santa Claus, no, but really this Santa figure earlier in this talk where a lot of it came, he was punishing children, he was the dark one, he was, again, tormenting children actually.
Another thing was, you know, Santa's supposed to be from the North Pole. Well, in Ezekiel chapter 8, verse 14, Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north, dot, dot, dot. So there, the Lord's house toward the north. Santa Claus says he comes from the North Pole. This is Satan trying to be like the Most High. Again, Satan isn't Santa Claus. Santa Claus is just made up. And they clothe, so Mark chapter 15, verse 17, and they clothed him with purple and plaited a crown of thorns and put it about his head. His notes in this book, again, you can just do your own research. I didn't have time to fact check all this. I mean, it's a big book here. I mean, I mean it's not huge, but it has here that... Uh, Well, I, I'm not. I'm not going to read it because I don't. I'm not going to look up what. It, let's see. I'll just move on. So in Deuteronomy chapter thirty-three, verse twenty-six, who rideth upon the heaven in thy help? Now, if you think of this Santa Claus, he's supposed to get his sleigh. He's kind of riding up in the sky. So Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 26, actually the full verse is here. There is none like unto the God of Jeshurun, if I'm pronouncing that right, who rideth upon the heaven in thy help and in his excellence, excellency, on the sky. But in uh, Zechariah, so that last point was, I mean, I could have maybe pronounced those words better, but again, part of Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 22, who rideth upon the heaven in thy help. Dot, dot, dot. But then again, you have this Santa Claus, Satan using Santa Claus to Try to be like the most high. In Zechariah chapter 2 verse 6. Ho ho. Dot dot dot. Saith the Lord. So when I say dot dot dot. It's not the whole verse. But there's ho ho ho. And in Zechariah chapter 2 verse 6. Now the Bible was written. It's God's word. The King James Bible. It was written before the Santa Claus myth was made. So you have Santa Claus. The history of Santa Claus, again, the Dark One, Black Pete, actually torturing children. So it's like a satanic figure, the Santa Claus is. But then what they're doing is, with the Santa Claus, you know, he says, ho, ho, ho. But that actually comes from the Bible. And in Zechariah 2, 6, again, ho, ho, saith the Lord. So that's saith the lord so that's you know the lord ho 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 saying god saying ho 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 against satan's out to get worship he's trying to be like the most high but again you know santa claus isn't satan you know, santa claus is just made up so it's interesting too that it says again in these plays that they had this devil character and he would say ho 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 what that is is just satan trying to think that okay so imagine so there's a satanic figure in this play and he's saying ho 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 and a lot of people are not going to know about the bible and you know that verse i gave you about the lord ho 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 saith the lord so people are going to think they saw that play they're going to think well that they're going to think if they have a play with a satan figure and he says ho 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 and people don't know that that's in the bible where saith the lord you know the god god saying ho 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 people are going to get the wrong idea with that play there's a couple actually different plays it looks like where that happened 
So they use like elves and stuff. Remember Santa has elves? And it's an evil spirit. It's a devil. That's when a fairy elves were like vampires, this person says. But, you know, they're devils. So I'm just pointing that out there. Again, it's he has like... Um, that should tell you a lot that, you know, Santa's using these elves. But elves are devils. They, you know, they they represent, you know, like how do I say Like, you know, elf is just made up, obviously. But um, if you look in some of these dictionaries and stuff... They'll describe as elf as an evil spirit, a devil. But um, again, like Santa Claus is just made up, and you know, I never seen an elf, so I'm just gonna say it's made up. But they'll take an idea like that, and um, they're kind of using elves and fairies to describe devils. Okay, so again, Santa Claus isn't real, but that Satan is real. Okay, and that, remember the Bible verse: your adversary. Our adversary is Satan. And then it goes into trolls. I don't know if trolls are part of Christmas or not, but again, it's trolls are wicked and um, or another, you know, trolls are devils too. So getting through this, I'm just reading here, deciding. Well, it gets into the milk and honey outside. It says you used milk and honey to nourish fairies or something. And these fairies, again, are supposed to like represent devils. Now, the fairies are just made up. But I think, what do they leave out for Santa? Like, like milk? I don't know about honey, but I think that's where this page was going here. So continuing on, it states Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4, it's not the whole verse, it just has for his great love wherewith he loved us. And that's how the picture of Santa is like, oh, Santa loves children and stuff like that. But in Mark, you know, look at Mark chapter 10 verse 13 through 14. And they brought young children to him that he should touch them. And his disciples rebuked those that brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased and said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. So again, uh, Jesus Christ loves children just want to make that clear and um the santa figure again santa you gotta just tell you know i don't have children but don't do the santa thing where you're you're lying by telling them about santa claus and you're going to get to this conclusion at the end of this video even more danger about santa claus I'm just reading this verse, and I don't know if you want to, how much you, like, well, it has, you know, Satan's out to get worshipped, okay, so he's using the Santa figure against the Santa figure, again, it comes from, like, the Black Pete and this other stuff, a lot of myths, where the Santa figure, where it's coming from, these myths, he was torturing children, so, um, again, that'd be another reason But it has, part of this book has Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. Ask and it shall be given you. Let me look up the whole verse on that one. So, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. So, they asked Santa for their gifts and stuff. 
the, the kids, the children, they're taught to believe in Santa and they're all excited about Santa. And, um, well, I'm going to get to the conclusion later here. They even have this uh, uh, Christmas song where it says, hang your stockings and say your prayers because Santa Claus comes tonight. So now there's prayers to Santa Claus. Uh, no, you got to be praying to God, praying to Jesus. That's who you pray to. It has James chapter 1, 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness neither shadow of turning in matthew 28 verse 18 all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth so again santa gives these gifts out but the real gifts come from god spiritual gifts so if you think about it they portray the santa fake character as all-knowing um you know, he knows who's naughty and nice. Um, and then Santa can be everywhere. You know, he's delivering presents. You know, Santa, the myth that he can deliver all these presents so he can be everywhere. And um, they portray Santa as all-powerful. That uh, They read some of these letters to Santa, you know, people write letters to Santa, and it's, these letters are like, hey, Santa, can you get my mom better? She has arthritis. Hey, Santa, for Christmas, please, um, you know, find a cure for cancer. These letters that children wrote, my mom has, my mom and I have disabilities. Would you please give us both new bodies? Dear Santa, dot, 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 bring my peace, bring peace on earth. So these children see Santa like that, and it's unfortunate. So there's only one God, Jesus Christ. That's who's got the power, and you know, there's the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost, and they are all one. So I just want to make that clear. Again, Matthew chapter twenty-eight, verse eighteen. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. So Santa, I mean, this myth, Santa's just living and he doesn't ever die. They have Psalm 102, verse 24, part of it. Thy years are throughout all generations. God is everlasting. The God I am is a title for God. The Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. This, uh, you know, the myth of Santa. You got to stop telling children that. Um, it's unfortunate because my sister, I think, tells their children about Santa and I just wish they would tell them that Santa doesn't exist. I think if her children ask me, if they tell me about Santa, I'm just going to have to tell them he doesn't exist if they ask me. If they ask me, do you believe in Santa? I'm going to say no. If they say, you don't, if they, if they're her children say, you don't believe Santa exists? No, he doesn't exist, I'll say. And it's interesting because you know the Holy Spirit for those Christians that are listening, do you ever hear about the Christmas spirit? Well, the Bible says, John chapter 14, verse 16 through 17, and I'll pray the Father, and he will, okay, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth, whom the wor world cannot receive. Because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. 
the comforter in that verse 16 is capitalized it's a capitalized c verse 17 spirit is capitalized i'll read first john chapter 4 verse 1 through 3 beloved believe not every spirit but try the spirits whether they are of god because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come. And even now already is it in the world. He is part of Psalm. I wish this book would just have the whole verse. So th this is just part of Psalm 34, 11. Come, ye children, dot, dot, dot. I will teach you the fear of dot, dot, dot. But again, that Christmas song, you better watch out. I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. He's going to find out who's naughty and nice. So... These children are like, maybe some of them are fearing Santa Claus because they think he knows who's naughty. He's making a list, right? Um, we'll get into that. But here's Psalm 76, 7. Thou, even thou, art to be feared, and who may stand in thy sight when once thou art angry. As Psalm 111, verse 10 the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Dot, dot, dot. It doesn't have the whole. But you remember Santa has lists, like I said. But again, it's just mimicking the Bible. It's mimicking God. Because in Romans chapter 14, verse 12, part of the verse, every one of us shall give account of himself too. So everyone, okay, you give account to God. Again, there's list. Talks about you know books being opened. Remember, Santa sits on a throne. You probably maybe sat on Santa's lap or something at a mall, sitting in like a th th throne or something. But God sits on a throne. Okay, so Matthew chapter twenty-five, verse thirty-one, part of the of verse. Then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. Also, about those uh, books I was talking about, Revelation twenty twelve, And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. So earlier, just maybe a couple of minutes ago, I read... Romans chapter 14, verse 12. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. It's talking about here in this verse about saved Christians. First King 22, verse 19. And he said, Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne. And all the host of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. So that should be First Kings 22 verse 19. Revelation chapter 20 verse 11 and 12. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them and i saw the dead small and great stand before god and the books were opened and another book was opened which is the book of life and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works so remember is isaiah 14 verse 13 
which I read earlier. For thou, um, let me get it up here so you can see it. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. So that was um, about Lucifer. Again, because in verse 12 he says, How, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? So this is a quote from Clancy, from Tom Clancy. Uh, I don't know if, I don't think that person's saved. I'm not really sure much about him. But the pamphlet says about Tom Clancy, He Tom Clancy says, this is him. He says, after you stop believing in Santa Claus, the whole world just goes downhill. Well, you know, he's wrong about that. But I think what the point is, this pamphlet's trying to make is children are putting their, they're believing in this Santa Claus, they're putting their faith in Santa Claus, and it's, it's dangerous. I'm going to get into this in a second. But it mentions some of the movies of Santa Claus, um, that miracle one, what's it called? I'm just trying to find the name here. The Miracle on 34th Street. I guess at the end of the movie, I don't know if the person gets a house, the child gets a house, like Santa might give the child a house. But remember in John 14, verse 2, In my father's house are many mansions. If it if it weren't not so, so, I would not have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And that was Jesus Christ speaking. And he said, I go to prepare a place for you. Again, he said, in my father's house are many mansions. So, that being said, let's see if there's anything else here. Oh, I guess the reindeers were originally, you know, because this fake Santa person rides reindeers, but there originally it was a white horse. And if you know your Bible verse, uh, Revelation chapter 19, verse 11 and I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. Yeah, a lot of people are looking for you know, children that believe the lie of Santa Claus are excited and they're looking forward to him. They're looking for the appearing of Santa Claus. But in Titus chapter 2, verse 13, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of. And for some reason, it's got that dot. I wish I would just, I guess that'd be my, uh, if I had to say something about this pamphlet book, I wish it would include the whole verse. So if we go over here, Titus 13, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. As Christians, we're looking for the appearance of Jesus Christ. These children, you maybe remember it. I remember, I was taught the Santa Claus where you're looking, when you're a child, you're thinking, oh, Santa Claus is going to be bringing me these gifts and stuff. Now as Christians, we're looking forward to the gifts, the heavenly gifts, gifts from our Savior, Jesus Christ. So I guess on the next page, he did include the whole verse of Titus 2.13. So I'm happy about that. So it includes First John uh, chapter 2, verse 28. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Also in James chapter 5, verse 8, 
Be ye also patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. So again, the dangers of the Santa thing is, you know, children are putting their faith and a lot of children are believing in the Santa Claus and they find out he's a lie. And then when Santa Claus has some of the same characteristics of Jesus Christ, what do you think that's going to do? I still think those children can get saved and stuff. So, But it, it's taking their faith and they're believing in this, you know, Santa Claus is fake and they they have that you know ch- children have that childlike faith and they believe and most some of them believe with all their heart in Santa Claus and with all their soul instead of them unfortunately they're believing in Santa Claus rather than Jesus Christ some of these children and you know there are children that are saved that you know believe in God they believe in Jesus Christ they um there's some saved children out there that you know maybe get the Santa Claus thing and they're still saved. But a lot of them, you know, a lot of the children, or you know, some of them, whatever you want to say, some of the children uh, that are believing in Santa Claus, not all those like teenagers. They'll just say like like a teenager that or whatever you want to say. Um, you know, it goes into this thing about the age of accountability, but. The point I want to try to make is uh, this Santa Claus is very dangerous. And if you've got children out there, you got to just tell them the truth. And tell them that Santa Claus is a lie. And tell them the truth. Tell them about Jesus Christ. And give them the gospel message. Uh, you can find a, you know, If you go to my YouTube channel, you can find the gospel message you can see it here i'll put it in the description how to get saved from going to hell again the lord is not willing that any should perish i think it goes on to say but again it doesn't include the whole verses but he wants everyone to come to repentance and um that being said there's one more verse here i want to try to give can find it might have to look it up I have one more verse here I want to see if it is here somewhere here I might have went past it so I hope uh, this talk I hope you understand what's going on here I think um, I think the Christians should get it. And, you know, I, I didn't even realize all this about Santa Claus and how bad it was. And it's, it's bad. So I'll probably leave you with this verse. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. And with all thy mind. 